Hi, this is Steve Kodan. Uh, welcome to the module on feng shui cures. The reason why I picked the name of my company as the feng shui cure, that after taking a lot of different training, I could see that was really one of the most pivotal things that had to be done when you're doing a feng shui evaluation, coming up with cures that would actually handle the situations things that were a problem. Now, what's a cure? Well, it's something that corrects or relieves a situation that is possibly harmful. And cures in feng shui actually intend to restore the flow of energy in an environment and provide the appropriate balance to give us that healthy impact on our lives. These are some of the areas of a house nowadays that we need to talk about in this module. It's just some of the few. And the stairways, if you have stairways in a listing or in your own house, we need to come up with some possible cures there to move the energy upstairs, for example. A ceiling fan as simple as that sounds, can be a problem in a particular setting. The bathroom location and its visibility from particular areas, for example, the front door or possibly even your bedroom, need to be handled. You may have some beams or overhead obstructions that create an environment that comes across as not being as positive as it needs to be. Yeah, even a bank of windows can sometimes in the wrong location be a problem. And we certainly have to always worry about the view from the front door. These are just some of the things that we're going to talk about. Cures can be put into these different categories. Uh, movement, color, life, sound, light, and reflection. And when you talk about movement, movement actually has an awful lot of positive attributes to it. And one of them is that it raises energy. It can raise energy in a particular location. In the career area, if you're thinking about the Bagua once again, you know, if you bring in a water feature there like a water fountain, that movement can raise the energy for you. In the helpful people area, the dominant element being metal, a wind chime like you see in this picture can give you that energy being raised. And in the wealth area, we have the wood element, for example, and a wood wind chime would work there. There's a lot of different types of movement. And when you're trying to sell a home, movement helps. It draws attention, especially outside. So there's a, a good reason to use a flag or flags like you see in the one picture. Or some of these other things that just move because of the wind, like a whirly bird. They draw attention. Now, water, of course, represents wealth, as you already know. And it's particularly great in the career area, which is dominant water, and in the wealth area, because the water reacts so favorably to the wood. But the outside, these same areas also work really well. And you want to use a water fountain sometimes outside. You want to make sure that it flows towards the house or in more of a neutral location. Try not to have a water fountain outside where the water flows away from the house. That represents the idea of the owner's wealth actually leaving. There's a lot of different things that you can categorize under life, but probably the primary thing would be plants. They raise the energy beautifully in all rooms. It would be to your benefit 
to have a live plant in every one of the rooms in a house that you're trying to sell. They soften sharp edges for you. They certainly represent the wood element nicely. And again, they can also represent wealth. Life can be introduced by other things too, okay? Anything that draws in a bird or a butterfly or yes, even a squirrel is something that is positive. When your actual environment outside draws in living creatures, it means it has good feng shui. You don't want to uh, stop them from coming in. You want them to feel good. And if they feel good there, again, the whole environment comes across as being very positive. Light can easily draw energy to a site. I like using light on a house even during the night so that I have the, the light around the door on 24 seven. It draws attention continuously. So somebody driving by just happens to see that your house is for sale and it's lighted up very beautifully. And the light also draws chi or energy into your house on an ongoing basis. It promotes and lifts energy. Again, it makes the area very more, very much more obvious. And I like using solar floodlights a lot on the for sale sign to make it again more noticeable on a 24 seven basis. Crystals are used quite a lot inside. It's a light cure. And I like to use them, especially around the front door when you first come inside. Think of what happens when light hits a crystal. You get this beautiful set of colors that are coming off of it. It also represents the idea of distributing the energy more evenly from that location. So it's a great way to start getting the energy into more of a balanced distribution. I do use wind chimes. And when I'm trying to sell a house, I like to use a metal wind chime in the helpful people under the eave, like you see here. Again, metal is dominant in this location. And it's just like calling out to all the people out there that are looking for houses to draw attention to your home. I use fabric to soften sharp corners. So if you look at this particular back porch of a house, they had some sharp corners that came off of some of the banisters and uh, the curtains actually softened that quite a lot and made it more comfortable for a person to sit out there. So curtains and pillows and throw rugs and of course tablecloths inside on a table can really soften and make it an area more comfortable for not only the people living there, but also a potential home buyer. Now mirrors, are a tremendously important cure that you need to get good at. And they have a lot of different benefits to them. One is reflection. In feng shui, there is the use of expansion, reflection, and deflection. You probably already know that a mirror wisely placed can expand an area and make it look bigger. And we have talked about the idea that we do not want to have any limitation in the house that we're trying to sell. We don't want it to ever come across that. So making an area feel bigger, more expanded, 
really helps a great deal. You don't want cramped spaces. Make it look larger. And I like to use mirrors quite often in the foyer area for a lot of reasons. A mirror gives you the water element. The dominant element often in this area of a house is water. So putting the mirror there off to the side of the front door can be very advantageous for you. Never put it facing the door because the energy will come in, hit the mirror and bounce back outside. Always put it, put it off to the side. And a mirror off the side, if it's placed correctly, often can bring in more natural light into the area, making the area even more comfortable. Now, there are certain trouble spots that you need to look out for. You might have a blocked entry where when they walk in, all they see is a wall and maybe a pathway off to the left and or a pathway off to the right. So what you put in that spot is not a mirror. Like you see here, you're going to put a colorful painting to draw people in, to draw the energy in. Now, if you have a very narrow entryway, use a mirror off to the side. If you have a dark hallway, use a mirror down at the end. If you have especially a bedroom above an area that is empty, like a garage, you might want to use a mirror there under a bed, for example, pointed straight down to give more stability. And if you have excessive columns, mirrors can actually take that look away too, if you just mirror the whole column. Here again is the narrow entry. You can see that it's not very welcoming on the left-hand side at all. It's actually somewhat nerve-wracking to walk through there. It's not very welcoming when you come home. And you can see the after is definitely a little bit better. It has the mirror off to the side. It has an obstacle that forces the energy to hit and go around and therefore get into a meandering pattern. And I think you can see in the other picture that, again, it would be very helpful if we did something with this narrow entryway. Now, when you have columns or blocked entries, strategically placing a mirror can be very, very helpful to, again, bring more natural light in and make it more comfortable. Now, when you place a mirror, and a lot of people don't do this, they don't really pay attention to what it reflects. In feng shui, what it reflects doubles that energy. So if it reflects something like clutter or unpaid bills, it symbolically doubles that problem. If it reflects something beautiful, like a great view or a beautiful painting, it doubles that pleasure. Keep that in mind when you're trying to sell a house. It helps considerably if you see that it reflects something beautiful. In feng shui, doubling the burners on your stove gives the impression that you are doubling your wealth. A mirror in a wealth area needs to be reflecting life and movement like a beautiful tree outside or a garden that you work so hard on, a bird feeder, bird bath, or a beautiful fountain. Let's look at what these mirrors reflect. One on the top left-hand side is pretty good. I'm not sure showing the stairway is the best way to do it, but it's okay, especially because of the flowers. The one in the center is not good at all. It reflects a bathroom. We don't want to do that. The one on the right-hand side reflects a beautiful archway, which is very positive. And then the one down at the bottom 
reflects the bed and the painting, which is nice. And another thing that you might want to consider in that one on the bottom is maybe putting a mirror that reflects the beautiful outside view. In feng shui, deflection is also another use of uh, mirrors. It's used to deflect something that is negative. Now you might have a bad relationship with one of your neighbors, for example. You might have some noise that is coming off of an expressway. You might have a poison arrow off of somebody's garage that's pointing right at your bedroom window. So if that is the case, and this negative energy has a name, by the way, of Sha Chi, you can use something called a Bagua mirror. And that's what a Bagua mirror looks like. And it's usually hung in particular locations. And it does not have to be visible. And in some cases, especially when you're trying to sell a house, it is better that it's not visible. Does it have to be a Bagua mirror? No, it does not. It can be a small compact mirror hidden in a garden, hidden behind a bush, pointing at a offending house or a dog that is always making noise. So putting it above the door is a common practice, but you don't have to do that. Again, you can hide it. I do want you to notice the T-junction, picture of the T-junction down in the bottom left-hand corner. We have all this energy in front of the house, and then we have energy shooting right from another street towards the house. This is a very negative situation, and we need to deflect a lot of this energy, especially coming off of where that red arrow is. So using a Bagua mirror or some type of a mirror can be very beneficial to you to ward off all that extra forceful energy. Here's a couple of sites that I use that are both very, very timely in getting me the mirrors. I also order my crystals from them. They're also fairly inexpensive, so you might want to try them, but there are a lot of different sites on the internet. Using mirrors to ground a room. If you notice the top two pictures on the right-hand side, it represents the idea of a bedroom above a garage, and there is no stability below that. You can see the picture on the outside in the bottom right-hand corner. There's a bedroom above a garage. It's not a great place to put really anybody, but especially not a teenager. We're still developing on a, on a mental level, and this can be somewhat depressing for them. They don't feel like they're grounded. They don't feel like there's a foundation below them. The cure is to put a mirror underneath the bed, a small mirror, with the mirror facing down, grounding that person, grounding that room to the earth. You can see in all these locations, they do not have a lot of stability or a foundation below them. The one picture on the bottom left, you can see that it's hanging over a cliff. Not a very stable situation. People can feel very insecure in an environment like that. And then the picture in the middle center, or in, on the bottom center, you see a house like this in a lot of cases in a beach community. And so again, they have the same problem here. All of the bedrooms in this case are really above ground and therefore have very little foundation below them. A problem in feng shui is when a house is below street level or above street level at such an extreme climb that it's very difficult to get up there every day. Let's take one top right-hand picture. 
really how anybody felt like that was a good place for a house. I have no idea. Can you imagine what you have to do to get into that garage every day? But even leaving can be somewhat of a chore. You can see again a steep driveway on the right hand bottom. And then the other two are driveways that lead down to a house. In all of these cases, it can be very, very difficult to leave the house or to come home. So what you want to try to do is to try to make it feel as comfortable as you can. And that is not going to be easy. But what you do is what you see at the bottom left hand side is to put things that have movement along the pathway to represent raising the energy for a person. You can certainly use light along the driveway too. Now the best and worst areas for the hanging a mirror are these. The best area is in the wealth area, back left hand corner of an environment. And of course in the career area, which is the center front. The worst are in the fame area where the element, the dominant element is fire or facing the main door. We've mentioned that or facing the bed where you put your head down. If you have to have a mirror in your bedroom, try to put it off to the side. It's even best if you don't have a reflective surface at all in your bedroom. Let's go over some very unique selling methods using feng shui. And I've used two out of these three, and they actually seem to have worked. The intention letter that you put in the helpful people area, you place it in a metal envelope, and that can be a white envelope, and a copy of your MLS sheet with a sold on it. And you just put it there in a, in a hidden situation, or you can even write a letter to the house saying goodbye and that you need to move on and that your new buyer, your new owner is going to be very, very happy there. And I have done that. And uh, again, I felt like it really sort of helped the environment to cut its ties. Another thing that's done in feng shui, a house item like a screw from a joint or, a, or one of the door jams can be taken out and put in something that floats and you can put it in a stream and let it go down the stream to say goodbye. One of the things that I think does have a big impact because I'm all about feeling is having the people that own the house to start packing start moving things out, hopefully maybe even into a storage shed. They have the idea that it's they're definitely moving. There's no looking back. So again, the helpful people area, of course, is in the bottom right. Again, I really do like the idea of telling the house, giving the impression in the environment that we are definitely cutting ties by placing something in that environment. Now numbers are a very powerful thing also. And you're going to see them in a lot of different places. In Chinese culture, in Mandarin, Different numbers have sounds that are not positive. The worst one is the number four. So if you find the number four in the left-hand column and follow it all the way over to the right, you see that in Mandarin, it sounds like the word death. So it is a number that is really shied away from, where people stay away from considerably. They would prefer not to buy a house that has too many fours in the address or too many fours in the price. So keep that in mind. There are certain numbers on here that are considered very positive. 
right? The number two, for example, represents a couple of chords. It represents love. The two numbers on here that are really often very, very positive are the eight and the nine. And they're actually searched out for. So even a number six, which in our society is considered to be somewhat unlucky, especially when you put three sixes together, that's not so in the Western culture. The number eight is, again, looked for by people in the Orient. As you can see, anytime they can get a telephone number or a license plate number that has positive numbers to them, they'll actually spend quite a bit of money to acquire it. And if you remember the Summer Olympics that were held in Beijing in 2008, the Chinese really badly wanted those Olympics because of the number eight. And it started on August the 8th, 2008, at exactly 8.08.08 p.m. The number nine stands for longevity. So it's a very popular number two. And you'll find out there are particular combinations that are also come off as very positive. But the most unlucky number is the number four. And this goes for a lot of different countries in China, Korea, Vietnam, and Japan. And in a lot of cases, they have some buildings that never even have a fourth floor. In Las Vegas, you'll see the same thing. We get a lot of people from the Orient that come to Las Vegas to gamble. So, they're very, very smart people there. They not only don't have a 13th floor for you and I, they don't have a fourth floor either. So again, keep in mind the number four sounds like death and Mandarin. So again, in China, They'll spend an awful lot of money on these auctions for getting a number that means a lot to them. And some more examples. The Alfa Romero 164 had a lot of trouble selling. So they changed it to the 168. Guess what? Sold very, very quickly. There are even locations in our country that are sought out because of the number eight. The Orient, Oriental population actually loves San Gabriel Valley. The zip code, or the area code, I'm sorry, is 818. So a lot of Asians move there because of the area code. The house address can be considered a problem for some people who follow feng shui. So if it's got one four in it, they probably won't even blink. If it has an eight or especially multiple eights, they'll start to feel more positive about it. The same with a nine. And some folks will actually get to the point where they'll start adding up the digits to see what it comes out to. For example, the last address, our house number is 2380. When you add those up, two plus three plus eight plus zero equals a 13, and one plus three gives you a four. If that's the, they might have that as the deciding factor if all things are equal. Now you can help when you're actually coming up with the price of the home. You can make the home more memorable this way too, if you decide to do something like this. You can make it lucky or unlucky for that small faction of people who actually start adding up digits. So a unique price will help them if you look at, look at it this way, 
but it also makes it more memorable. So instead of using the, the price of 195,900, if you use the price 195,903, it actually adds up to a very positive number and it also is memorable and so forth. So it's just another trick that can help you. And without a doubt, if you subtract a few dollars or you add a few dollars, your homeowner will have no problem with that, I promise. Now, intention is a very positive component or a positive cure in feng shui. And this training that I took, we learned the three secrets of reinforcement. And it goes like this. You have a body component, a mind component, and a voice component. And after you've done the physical cures to your house, just take another extra few minutes to do this intention. You can go to the front door, for example, if you're trying to sell the house and your body component can be putting your hands together in prayer, like you see in the picture. Your mind component would be visualizing what you're looking for. And in this case, the house to be sold. You could be visualizing a sold on the sign out front. You could be visualizing being at a closing at a table with the buyers and the sellers and the attorney all around the table. And the voice component would be something where you either use a prayer like the Lord's Prayer or you come up with an affirmation that you've created or anything that positively reflects in what you're trying to do and you say it nine times. So again, if you're trying to sell a house, one thing to do after you've done the physical cures, put your hands together to finish it off. Visualize a sold on top of your sign and maybe say the Lord's Prayer nine times and you've then given it to the universe to help you to get your home sold. According to the training that I've taken, this actually doubles the effectiveness of the cures that you have done to the house inside and outside. So again, you can do that right there at the front door if you'd like. Now, if you're staying in the house and you've made some cures, for example, to your master bedroom up at the top left, you can do it in that room right there. And again, you just do it one time. You don't do it multiple times. Now, if your house has a slight energy problem by missing some corners, like example in this house where the red arrows are pointing, that if we put something right there, it would square the house and therefore allow the energy to fill it in better and also to give us a better feel Things that you could put in that corner right there outside the house are a tree, a bird bath, a bush. You could even bury an uncut crystal at that location, at that intersection, and then do the intention, the three secrets of reinforcing. So again, there is an awful lot to the perception that we're going to give the buyer. They're gonna be looking at a lot of houses. You have one chance to get them putting you on the short list. So using all of the senses, using these cures, using intention can help you immensely to get the job done. 